want to share with you yeah. And your family, your family The love of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in And we will grow together To increase our faith with God With one touch Ministries We're touching hearts And changing lives That's where we're going. Exodus 13, 21 through 22 is where we're going to start our message from today. Thank you so much, honey, for exalting, for the level of exaltation. I was back here thinking to myself, I said, she better not start preaching my message. <laughs> I said, she on, she on the board of what some of the things that I want to be able to talk about today. And they were to encourage you. But hopefully, what I said is done is going to be able to touch your heart and change your life. That's our motto here at One Touch Ministries. We believe in touching hearts and changing lives. And we thank you. Hallelujah. Listen, uh, Exodus chapter 13, verses 21 through 22. I'm going to read from the modern English version of the Bible. And it says, uh, The Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way. Yeah. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so that they might travel by both day and night. And he, he did not remove the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night before the people. And on today, I want to be able to give you the message on today that you have to follow the cloud. Yes. And that's our message title, uh, title for today. Follow the cloud. Yes, follow the Hallelujah. cloud. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done and everything that you're going to do for us in our life, oh God. Father God, I pray, Lord, that um, that I decrease and you increase on the inside of me. Now may we be glorified. May you be. Uh, may we be edified. May you be glorified. May the devil be horrified. I need you better to type in the comment section and say, "Follow the cloud." I need you to be able to tell people right now that you know you need to be able to follow the cloud. Now, as a kid, I remember as a kid we used to play a little game, a game that's called follow the leader. Uh, we would ride on our bikes, and as we ride on our bikes, you know, we'll get uh, daring, and we jump the curbs, and we jump to humps, and, and if I probably was young today, and I was able to ride my bike inside of this uh, sanctuary right now, I'd try to be able to jump the hump, and then jump over the speaker. I'm telling you, we used to do crazy things. We used to build ramps. Build ramps and jump the ramps and come down on the other side because we were playing follow the leader. And then sometimes when you're playing follow the leader, the leader will uh, try to, uh, he, he, will, he will pedal real fast. And when he pedals real fast, he will uh, jump over a mud puddle. And then other people are supposed to jump, jump. And then sometimes they'll run through the mud puddle. And so then you're supposed to run through the mud puddle. But I remember a time where we were right through the mud puddle and I got stuck. See, sometimes, uh, so, 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 so I got stuck. And so what happens is that I began to get upset because I was, I got stuck in the mud. So not only now do I have on my good pair of tennis shoes and try to figure out how come you go so bad through shoes because, hey, I just always just wore shoes and I just played in them all the time. And so now I got mud on my shoes and I, I got mud around my pants. And so I'm thinking in my head, my mother is going to be mad as jacks because now I done got uh, uh, money, got my new shoes money, I done got my pants money, money. See, back in the day, we used to have, we, when we came home from school, we had to change from out of our school clothes into our play clothes. And so I didn't change out of the play clothes. I, I, I didn't change out of the school clothes into my play clothes. I went out bike riding. So now I got my new shoes dirty. I got my new uh, pants, my school pants dirty. And I just knew that, man, I'm going to be, whoo, 
surely they'll be upset with a brother. <laughs> and so, and then sometimes you'll, you'll go through the mud, and if you, you try to go through the mud and say, for instance, all right, well, I know I'm going to get muddy now. I'm going to get dirty because I put on my play clothes, I got on my play shoes, and I'm going through the mud, I'm traveling through the water and the rain and through the mud, and all of a sudden I get stuck, and I get stuck to the point that now I done fell over into the mud, so now I'm dirty from head to toe. Come on, sir. I'm stuck. I'm stuck like Chuck. And that's how some people feel right now in their life. They feel like that they're stuck. People get, are getting stuck in the mud. They get stuck in situations. They get stuck in their mind. They get stuck in their heart. They get stuck in their spirit like they can't go nowhere. They get stuck. They get stuck with people. And I'm here to declare to you today to pull yourself out of that relationship. Pull yourself away from those people. Pull yourself away from those false teachings. Pull yourself away from those abusive relationships. Pull yourself away from those heartbreaks. Baby, I'm here to tell you that you're stuck. You're stuck in the mud, you're stuck in a case, you're stuck in something that you seem like that you can't get your way out of, or it seems like, that, oh man, I'm so stuck, I'm so dirty, I don't know what to do with myself, and now, I, I, I mean, I'm, 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 now I'm just overwhelmed, stuck in the mud, Jesus. in the gutter. I'm hurting, I'm physically hurting, I'm mentally hurting, I'm stuck. I'm stuck with people. I'm stuck with situations. I'm stuck in the mud. I'm dirty. I feel nasty. I don't feel clean. I feel like that uh, I don't want to go home because I don't want to be embarrassed. I, I, I don't want to face the reality that I done messed up. But you're stuck. And God has said to you, it's time for you to come out of those sticky situations. You have been uh, molested in your life. And an enemy comes into your mind and takes you back to the hatred that you had for that person, you, that you had for that thing. You're stuck! Uh, you, you may have been cheated on by a previous boyfriend, a previous a girlfriend. You, 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 you said that I never love nobody again. I never let nobody get that close to my heart again. I never trust people again. Honey, I'm here to tell you that you're stuck. Yes, come on. You're stuck in the mud. mud. You're stuck in the rut. You're stuck in some mess that you don't know how to get yourself out of. But I'm here to tell you that God is able to clean you up. Yes. Uh, because every time you come to think about it, again, the enemy comes to you and you think back on that thing that afflicted you or that hurted you. You think about the hatred that you have for that person. You get stuck again. You're in a sticky situation. You may have come, you may have been raped uh, before. Somebody probably sp uh, spiked your drink and something happened to you and then when you woke up the next day you said what happened to me? Uh, and you feel like that you're stuck. And don't get pregnant behind it because now you really feel like what am I going to do? Yes. This is a sticky situation. Well, I'm here today to declare to you that it's time for you to get unstuck. It's time for you to come out of those situations. It's time for you to renew your heart, renew your mind, renew those things. Come out of that darkness that God has called you out of and into the marvelous light because he said that he died for your sins. And this is the reason why that you have to face the fact. You have to face that thing. Yeah, I hope you're taking notes right now because number one, you need better to face the thing that got you stuck. Yeah. There's been things that's been that's happened behind closed doors, and I'm just gonna prophetically insert this right here that my wife wrote a book that says uh, behind closed doors. You need to go to Amazon and go buy that book. 
$25 and she says, I'm mapping out a blueprint how to come out of those situations, out of those sticky situations. And now is the time to come out of those sticky situations, come out of that circumstance, get out of that mindset that nobody loves me, that nobody cares about me, that nobody's ever going to see about me, see about Shad. Who's going to see? about me when God says that I shall supply every single one of your needs according to the, my riches and glory. You have to believe that God is going to handle every situation. God is going to handle every circumstance. God is going to take care. He said that I shall supply every he said I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health even as your soul prosper. So that means that God don't want to see you down. God don't want to see you out. He don't want to see that you have uh, 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 just the thing that there's nobody that's there for you. God is there for you, my brother. God is there for you, my sister. God is there for you, my child. And he is here to tell you on today that I'm bringing you out of those sticky situations. And now we look at our scripture today, we discover that the Israelites came out of a sticky situation. Now they were imprisoned under the rule of Pharaoh for 430 years. For years they cried out to the Lord, God deliver us. God send a deliverer. God take us away from our slave master. God was out in this situation and then finally the day came that God delivered them out and hallelujah God delivered his people he pulled them out yeah. of slavery he pulled them out of those situations and on today I'm here to tell you that God has sent me as a deliverer to tell you that you're coming out of your sticky situations God is a deliverer. God can deliver you out of any situation. God can deliver you out of any circumstance. Lift up your heads unto the hills which cometh your help because your help cometh from the Lord. I feel just a tad bit preaching. I'm trying not to go there yet. But they left out of Egypt so fast that they didn't even have time to break the bread the correct way. I'm here to tell you that if you're in a sticky situation right now, that you need to hurry up and get up out of there. Leave the stuff behind. It really doesn't matter, but God is saying to leave that stuff behind. You need to come out of that situation. Come out of that marriage that don't mean you no good. Come out. He keeps on cheating on you. Come out of that situation. Your child, it seems like they don't want to, to do right, come out. Sometimes you have to leave people where they are. So if they don't want to do right, then it's time for you to walk away. Somebody type in the comments and say, it's time for you to walk away. It's time for you to walk away from that situation. It's time for you to work or walk away from that circumstance. It's time for you to walk away from that man and that woman who didn't mean you no good. It's time to come out. Is the reason why the bread didn't get a chance to rise is because they didn't put no, they didn't have a chance to put leaven in the bread. They had unleavened bread. So let me give you point number two really quick. It's time to get the leaven out. Uh, leaven, leaven, leaven uh, represents sin. Leaven represents that thing that you continue to go back to. Ah, uh, pornography. That thing that you go back to uh, in your mind. That thing that go, you go back to in your mind. The, that sin that says, you know, uh, I, I, I didn't thought about it. I hadn't thought about sinning. I might as well go ahead and do it. I, 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 I thought about committing adultery, so I might as well go ahead and do it. I thought about getting high as a kite. I might as well go ahead and do it. I thought about 
robbing the bank, so I might as well go ahead and do it. I thought about doing some crazy stuff. I might as well go ahead and do it. Laughing is that sin, that, 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 that transgression, that thing that you always go back to that seems like you can never get rid of. And God is saying that you need to get the leaven out of your life. You have to ask God to be able to. God, take the taste. the taste. I don't want to feel it no more. I don't want to taste it no more. I don't want to feel it. I don't want to taste it no more. I got to get the leaven out. My God. There's sin that's in our life. I'm talking to everybody. I, I ain't just talking about you that's watching. I'm talking about people that's here in the sanctuary. I ain't talking about, you know, somebody down the street. I'm talking about us. I'm talking about me. That there's sin that's in my life that I need to get rid of because God says that I'm coming back for a church without spot and without wrinkle. Get the sin out of your life. Yes, come on, sir. There are things in our lives that we can't control it. And we have to ask God to burn it out. Take the leaven out of our lives and see how God will change our situation. God said to uh, call on me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that you don't even know about. Call on God right now to get the leaven out of your life. Leaven, leaven, leaven. A little bit of leaven leavens the whole lump. Just a little bit of leaven leavens the whole lump. Just a little bit of sin. Just a little bit of doubt. Just a little bit of worry leavens the whole lump. Just a little bit of this and just a little bit of that. That will, will take your family out. Just a little bit of this. Just a little bit of that will take the whole church out. Just a little bit of this. Just a little bit of that will take the whole country out. Just a little bit of this. Just a little bit of that will take the whole city out. Just a little bit of leaven will leaven. Come on, sir. The whole lump. Just a little bit of sin. My God, my God. The children of Israel are now in the wilderness. In the wilderness. They're in the desert. Yeah, they're in the desert. Now, if you don't know, the desert is hot. Oh, it's super hot. Yes. During the daytime. And then at nighttime, it gets super cold. If y'all didn't know. At nighttime. So that's why the scripture says. And then in verse 21, the Lord went before them by a pillar of cloud to meet them along the way. Now that word along is actually italicized. And when you see italics text in the Bible, it means that uh, that was in the original text. It actually means that they inserted that there so you can get a clear understanding of what's going on. So it says here that, uh, that the Lord went before them by a pillar in a cloud that led them the way. Not along the way. Led them the way. See, there is a way. I, I, that ain't even my notes. I don't even know if I know it. But the Bible says that Jesus said that I am the way. The truth. Oh, I feel preaching. Don't forget that. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to me but by my Father. But through me, Jesus is the way. Oh, my God. In the pillar of fire that led them so that they might travel both day and night. I'm here to declare to you that you need to know how to follow the cloud. Now, now I'm mean, going to help you to imagine this thing really quick and then I'll be able to go on. Then, honey, you better give me a little bit something here. So, when you're, again, during the daytime, uh huh, it's hot as hell. <laughs> it's hot. And so because it's hot, so then that means that God provided a cloud to cover the children of Israel, to keep them cool in the daytime. And then there was a there was a cloud that was in front of them that led them. So wherever the cloud went, that's where they went to. Woo, come on, come on, come on. I want you to understand something here. My <laughs> 
I want you to understand something here today. That not only does God got you covered, but he's also leading you. I need you to type in the comments and say, not only has God got me covered, but God has got me covered. He's leading me in this situation. God is leading me into the right path for righteousness. I thank you, Lord, for leading me in this situation. Hallelujah. And so, the, so not only did God lead them in a pillar of cloud by day, but also a pillar of fire by night. It gets get super cold at nighttime. Come on, sir. My God. It is super cold at nighttime. So when nighttime came, the pillar, the, they switched, and the pillar of fire covered them to get them warm at nighttime. And they also was able to follow the fire, the pillar of fire, at nighttime so that they can move. So I'm here to tell you today that God got you covered. Hallelujah. The, the cloud covered them from the heat. And, and the cloud made sure that they, they were being led in the right direction. So we have to learn how to follow the cloud. Somebody type in the comments and say, follow the cloud. Follow the cloud. If God says to move, then we will move. If God is not moving, then we're not moving. You heard my wife say earlier today that if we come together and talk about something, and if we don't agree on it, and then we don't move, which means that God must not be moving. God may be speaking, but God may not be moving. But as soon as I see God move, he take one step, I'll take one step. He takes another step, I'll take another step. I'm gonna follow you wherever you will lead me. God, wherever you go, I will follow you. God, I pray right now that you continue to lead me, that you continue to guide me, that you continue to direct me. God, I'm not gonna move until you tell me to move. Will you tell me to take a step? I'm gonna take a step. When I say move forward, you better move forward. If I say to move back, then you better move back. I thank you, Lord, that I'm moving forward. I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. And I'm here to declare to you that my past is over. I'm not looking back to my past. I'm not looking back to the things that have been held back from before. But I'm going to continue to look forward. I press toward the mark. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that my past is over. Every situation that's behind me, I'm not going back to it. I'm not looking back anymore. As a matter of fact, I'm a smash the rearview mirror of my car because I don't want to look back no more. Jesus. 
Jesus. I'm going to see my victory. The enemy thought that I was going to stay in the pit of hell. But I'm here to tell the enemy that I'm not going to be stuck in the pit of hell. I'm going to see the victory. For God is good in his mercy and doeth forever. And his truth endureth to all generation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus will bring me out and I got a reason I got a right I got a reason to give God the praise to give him the glory to give him the to give him adoration to give him peace to give him love to give show joy the joy of the Lord it is my strength and I'm going to praise him
Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, if any one of you is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Proverbs 4 and 25 says, Let your eyes look directly forward, and your gaze be straight before you. See, what happened is that when you look back, as you begin to look back, I'm trying to tell you, don't look back to your former life. Don't look back to those things that God delivered you from. And the reason why I'm saying that is because Genesis 19, 26 says, and Lot, right, look back. You got to know how to season things with flavor. Sometimes I may cook some food and I say, baby, this ain't got no flavor. I need a little salt. When I, when I watch Dave Ramsey cooking shows, he looks at them and he throws the food in there and says, what does it need? He said, it needs salt. God has called you to be the salt of the earth, not to become Salt. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, reason why you shouldn't be looking back, reason why you need to come out of those sticky situations, because it said, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, plans that will send you to your future, plans to give you a hope and an expected end. And I don't know about you on today, but I believe that God has plans for me. He has scriptures laid up for me. And I'm not going to look back. I'm not going to look at those things that are behind me. I'm not going to get caught up in the mud. I'm going to continue to look forward. I'm going to follow the cloud in the name of Jesus. Exodus 14, 15, and 16 says, And the Lord, and the Lord says to Moses, Why do you cry to me? We feel like God said that because he's, he's sick of hearing about your cry. He's sick of hearing about the same that he already delivered you from. So why are you crying to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff. Stretch out your head. And the sea is going to be parted. He's having people right now to come out of dry, to walk on dry ground. To walk on dry ground. You're not getting stuck in mud. You're walking on dry ground. The lady stuck in a river. The army of Pharaoh is behind you. And God has made some kind of miracle for you. And God has said, you're not going to get stuck in the mud. No, you're not, honey. Just keep walking. Just keep walking. Keep going. Keep pressing. I know that the enemy is after you, but he can't do nothing to you. You're not going to get stuck. Don't be afraid. Don't get tired. Don't walk out. We can but joy comes in the morning. Uh, type in the comments and say joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Therefore, since you are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses,
across the mark. This season right now, you're going to have to press. You're going to have to. It's going to be hard, baby. But you're going to have to press. You may have to get down on your knees. And you may say, God, help me out. But I'm going to press. I'm going to press. Even if I get down on the ground. It becomes like a woman with the issue of blood. I'm going to press. I can see the hem of his garment. But I'm going to press. Oh, hallelujah. If I could just touch but the hem of his garment. I'm going to press. I'm not going to let no naysayers in the name of Jesus come up against me. I'm going to press. I got a goal that I'm going to get to. Because the worst is over And the best is yet to come Because what's coming for me Is way better than what's been I may have been done wrong in the dark But what God brings out of darkness He shall bring it to the light I'm not ashamed To show forth the praises of Him Who has called us out of darkness
when God showed up on the mountain and shook the mountain, there was a cloud. Jesus. There was a cloud. And so Moses, Moses said, God, I want to be able to see you. And God said, you, you can't look at me. Yes. Because if you see my face, you're going to die. But I'm going to put you in a cleft of a rock. Yes, sir. And so what, what, what God did then was that his presence showed up. God physically showed up for Moses. And he put his hand in his face. Yes. And he walked by. He said, you can't see my face. But I let you see my hind parts. And so literally in that in that verse of scripture, it literally means that I will show you things to come. There you go. I will show you things to come. To move on it as of yet, but I will show you things to come. You got to be able to follow the cloud. Follow when God says move. Not, not even when say God says move. Literally look at him like this. Like, is he moving? I think he may have moved an inch. Okay, man, I ain't gonna move no. I'm gonna wait till he get about a yard away. Because maybe, you know, I could be wrong. Okay, get about a foot away. Okay, look like you God is moving. Right, let's move. It's alright to cross check. It's alright to cross check. Some of you family that's currently watching us live. God has spoke some things to you, but he's telling you not to move as of yet. Yeah. Wait to hear my voice and wait to see me move. by a pillar a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Yes, it gave them the ability because remember they were in the desert. Some of you may feel like that you're in a, a desert place. The desert is dark. There's no light poles. You see stars and you see the moon. How you know where you're going? God provided light by fire yeah. at nighttime that gave them the ability to be able to travel at night if they need to. Now watch this. Watch this. I saw something else in the scriptures. Not only did the children of Israel see this pillar of fire by night in this cloud by day. But God showed himself because other people saw the same thing. Come on. They knew that the God of Israel was with them. Jesus. Jesus. So what my question is, what do people see? Do they see the God of Israel or do they see God of yourself? Yeah. Or see the God of somebody else? Yeah, yeah, I like that. In your life. Do what do what what do people see out of your life? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Do they see the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Do they see the God of Israel? People knew, people troubled and feared when they saw the God. If I have time next week, if the Lord leaves me, because the Bible says that I want to send you to the land with the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Hivites. All those different ites are a spirit. Boy, I might have to study this this week and teach this next week. The Canaanites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, all those ites. I 
don't have no Bible in front of me, so that's why I can't even go to the scripture right now. But it's perfect. But the Spirit of God, but God the Father, allowed them to be able to conquer all those idols. So go on today. Might be my lesson for next week. But on today, I want to say to the listening artists right now that if you're in a sticky situation, if you got stuck in the mud, got stuck in the mud. if there's some things that happen to your life that it seems like that you just can't let it go, I want you to just pray. Just, just bow your heads. Just close your eyes. I'm, I probably can't see you, but it's alright. If you're driving, don't close your eyes. Don't do that stuff. But just listen really quick. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to you right now to, for those who are listening under the sound of my voice that they have been stuck in a lifestyle. Stuck in a situation. Stuck with people who meant them no good. Suck! And I'm here to tell you that I'm here to deliver a word to you to say, come out! In the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. That's it. That's it. Come out. That's it. In the name of Jesus. No longer. <laughs> Go back. Yes, sir. Move ahead. I'm here to declare to you your past yeah. it's over for those of you who are watching on YouTube listen every single Friday I release a video but for those of you who are watching on YouTube I declare and I decree your freedom today yeah, in the name of Jesus yeah, yeah, yeah. Come no on. longer Come on. looking back no longer looking to what had you enslaved into sin. I don't care if you were a prostitute, don't go back. I don't care if you was on the pole, don't go back. Come on. I don't care if you did sell drugs because you got some good money out of selling those drugs. Don't go back. Today I declare deliverance in your life. Be set free of Jesus and learn how to follow the cloud. If you want to learn how to follow the cloud here with One Touch Ministries, I want you to inbox us. I want you to say, I need to learn how to follow the cloud. To partner with you because I want to learn how to follow the cloud. I, I, I had to get to learn about this this God that you speak of. I need to learn how to follow the cloud. Listen, we can pasture you right there where you are. You don't have to be in the Metro Orlando area. We can pasture you right where you are. Why I know this? Because we're pastoring people in Kenya, Africa. Right now. They're watching, they may not be watching live right now, but I bet you I'll get a text message in the morning from Pastor Artino saying, Great word, Pastor. Great word. He called me Bishop. Great word, Bishop. We have a whole ministry yes. across the globe, literally, honey, across the globe, oh. literally. Oh. Come on now. They said, not only just partner with One Touch Ministries. When we had our meeting this past week, I said, you need to tell me that you want to partner with us. We did, that, that he said, no. He said, I want you to be the senior pastor. I want you to be the lead bishop. I want to change the name from the church that we have right now to One Touch Ministries International Kenya and you and your wife pastor us. Can't make this 
stuff up. Can't make this stuff up. Why? Because we learn, me and my wife learn how to follow. We learn how to follow the cloud. Obedience. Obedience, that's it. And I said we got everything right. No. That's not what I'm, I'm not saying we got everything right. Sometimes we missed it. Made a lot of mistakes. Made a lot of mistakes. But see, but God is a God that forgives and he will set you back on course. And so don't feel bad because you made a mistake. That's right, that's right, that's right. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. Because we all have made mistakes. David made a mistake. He slept with Bathsheba, then had his uh had, had her her husband killed on the front lines. And God said, David is a child after my own heart. What? That doesn't make no sense. Abraham, the father of our whole entire faith, lied about his wife to a whole king and caused sickness and disease to come about a whole country. And it turned around and, and the king finally said, how come you didn't tell us? God punished a whole nation because of a lie. Wow. I'm just here to encourage you, just to let you know that you, this because you messed up, it's all right. Because God can still make it all right. And still make it all right. That's all right. I'll give you one last one. Saul, before he became Paul, killed believers in Jesus Christ. And I read all of his books in the Bible. Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul. Hey, I'll give y'all this one for free. Peter was a cousin. And cut the man's ear off. Denied Jesus three times. But wait a minute. After Jesus died and the Holy Ghost fell, Jesus, uh, Peter began to preach. And 3,000 people gave their life to Jesus Christ. Don't tell me that God can't use you. I'm done. I'm done. Father God, bless these people and bless this word on today, oh God. Father God, I pray, Lord, that right now, in the name of Jesus, that these, your people, will learn exactly who you are. That you're the God of deliverance. That you're the God of breakthrough. We thank you, Father, for every single thing that you have said and done on today. Father God, I pray right now that it touch hearts and it change lives in the name of Jesus. Hey, listen, if you want to be able to, um, you can join me on the platform, honey. Uh, if you want to, again, want to be able to join One Touch Ministries, please inbox us, let us know. As well as if you want to give, if you want to sow into our ministry, our cash up is the dollar sign number one touch him. And you can also go to Giveify, where you can be able to uh, also give unto the Lord that way. I want to thank you in advance, because some people probably just wait for the broadcast again to give. Uh, I want to thank you in advance in your giving. I want to thank you in advance for in in investing into the kingdom of God. Because it really is an investment. It is. It is. And when you sow to this ministry, it helps for these lights. It helps for this building. And, and, and I, we launched the soul campaign a few weeks ago. And every single dime that's going to the soul campaign is going to our brothers and sisters in Africa. 
because the Bible says that we are blessed and we bl when we bless the strangers, the orphans, and the widows, that God gives a supernatural blessing. So within the next few weeks, maybe the next few months, we're going to give every let everyone know exactly what we're going to be doing over there. Amen? Amen. Amen. You had some other announcements. Hey, listen, don't forget this upcoming Saturday at 12 o'clock noon, my wife is going to be going live with Prophet uh, Baba Tudi, who is in Uganda. Uganda? Nigeria. Nigeria. I'm sorry. Okay. In Uganda, in Nigeria. I don't know. I got to research. I forget. But this is it. <laughs> but we're going to be praying for brothers and sisters in Nigeria. This is going to be so awesome. It's going to be, we're going to connect through Zoom to Facebook Live. Yes. And you have another announcement. Oh, no, I just want to, we just want to let people know, listen, stay connected. Stay connected to One Touch Ministries because even during the course of the week, we do have other things that we do. You know, we also, on one Saturday of um, um, last Saturday, um, Minister Henry was able to to come live and preach a, a magnificent word. He is one of our ministers in training. And today, you know, we want to just say, God bless you once again, Minister Henry. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being a part of One Touch Ministries. Thank you for wanting training. And Pastor, you were saying so um, passionately about um, Pastor Maureen and Pastor Jackson, how they want training and all the other pastors for the other campuses that we have one training and that they're big on training in Africa. And I said, Lord, I wish they had that spirit here in the United States, that they had that spirit to want to be trained, wanted to be cultivated, wanted to take time. And something that we always tell people, invest in your training. We also have our Win Academy, which is our leadership school, our school of prophets, school of leadership. And we teach, we teach our leaders yes. how to stand still. Yes. Listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit. We teach our leaders how to get to know themselves. Because how can you be a prophet if you don't know who you are? Yes. Come on, somebody. How can you be a prophet if you don't know who you are? Yes. And how can you be a prophet constantly making the same stupid mistakes over and over and over again? Yes. How can you become a pastor and lead thousands of people and you keep making the same adultery mistakes? Come on. I'm not going to, you know, bash anybody. I love Jamal Brown. But how can you lead those women and men of God and you still sleeping with congregation, still sleeping with the members of your congregation. When are you gonna mature? I understand we make one mistake. Yeah. I understand we make two mistakes. Yeah. But when you come, when you start pushing three and four, it's no longer a mistake, it's called a habit. And then it's called enjoyment. That those are the transgressions. Yes, that sir. David talked about. Yes, sir. Because sin just simply means to miss the mark. We sin, we miss the mark. Right. But David said, uh, blot out my transgressions. Yes, sir. Those transgressions are those things that you continue to do over and over and over again. So it's no longer sin, and it's, it's no longer a mistake either. It's a habit. It's a habit. It's you transgressions. Enjoy. You enjoy it. You enjoy it, is that? <laughs> this is what we teach. We teach these things. We want you to get connected with Win Academy because Win Academy, um, we have some students already enrolled, but we want to enroll more people. We want people that want training. And let me tell you something. We don't, we have done a lot of training for free, but the Win Academy, you must pay for. And the reason why we ask you to pay for it has nothing to do with putting money in our pockets. Right. My husband works. He takes care of his family. I work as well, but my husband carries the bulk of the load due to the fact that he wants me to be in a position where I can hear God so that I can do what needs to be done in the kingdom to take the load off of him. So in return, he carries the load in the household. 
but we're not doing it to receive money to, to bless us. We want you to invest in yourself. That's something that we learn, even in marriage counseling. Yes. What did our counselors say to us? They said to invest in your marriage, which yes. means that you need to buy books, you need to watch YouTube videos, you need to go to conferences and pay for this stuff because when you pay for it, you're investing yes. into your marriage, you're investing into yourself. Because you're going to, what we learned is that when we buy books and we buy CDs and DVDs that we can watch together to learn more how to bring our family together, to learn how to bring um, us together as a married couple, because we paid for it. <laughs> because we paid for it. Because we paid for it. We appreciate it even the more. So this is why we say, listen, invest into yourself. My wife just did a whole message this past week about investing into yourself. It's time for us to be selfish. God is calling for us to be self selfish in this hour. And it's selfish doesn't mean that you have to deny everybody. It means see about you first. That's right. Selfish means to be to see about you first. And if you so happen to have right. goods that you have room to share. Yeah. So that's where they said room enough to receive. So when I fill my pantry and I make my food and I take care of my children mm -hmm. and if I have something left over and I say, well, you know what? I could feed my neighbor next door mm -hmm. because I have enough in my cupboards. Yes. I have enough on my table. And I have enough, and my pantry is full. Yes. Did you hear that? The pantry is full. full. Yes. And I have boxes sitting outside of my pantry. Yes. I could take one box and give to my neighbor and say, hey, neighbor, I did have a lot left over. I want to bless you. Yes. But I was selfish first. I took care of my home. You know, you know, they teach that in business. They teach in business that, uh, that this isn't this isn't church business. This is just regular market management business. Period. They tell you to pay yourself first. Yes. Pay yourself pay, first. Pay yourself first. Because you got to keep going. That's and right. if you don't have a roof, then how can you market? Right. If you don't have electric, how can you market? Right. If you don't have internet, how can you market? Right. So take care of you first. Pay you first. Pay, pay your first. bills yep. first. Yep. You know what I mean? So you know, in the kingdom, we'll say, so in the kingdom, we say, go ahead, pay your tithes and offering, but your tithe. Now that tithe is due God from the top. And then, then you see it. You pay yourself. yourself. Right, then you pay yourself. And then pay the bills. Then you pay the bills, right? Because when you're self employed, that's what you got to do. Yes, Honey, yes. Go ahead and pay your tithes, pay yourself. Exactly. And then, all right, these are the bills that we got to get paid. And make but sure that's that. what I did yesterday. Exactly. I got a check from a business that I have. I have a t shirt business. And I got a check. Mm -hmm. And I told Pastor Shannon, um, because they were asking me, I had I had an uh, option to, to send it over early or take its time to be sent. I said, Pastor Shannon, well, I really don't need the check right now. I said, it can take its time. But the check came early anyway, with no fee taken out. Right, right, right. Because sometimes when you do stuff early, there's a fee that has to be paid. Yes. So I still got my check early without a fee. Because I was obedient. Because God had told me to be selfish. I knew I didn't need it right then and there, but I did want it. So I said, well, God, send it to me later. Right. He said, because in your act of obedience, you, you, you were taking it for yourself. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to send it to you early with no fee attached to it. Yes. So I got all of my check. Yes. And the first thing I said to you before I went to the store to take care of business, I said, no, 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 wait a minute. Let me pay my tithes first. Then I can do whatever I want to do for me. That's right. And that's what I did. That's right. And I felt good. Yes. I felt good. But listen, connect with us to Win Academy. The, the classes you get received, we have first semester and second semester. You cannot bypass first semester and get to second semester because we're talking about leadership 101. No. 
you have to go from first semester to second semester. So all my first semester students, please enroll now. My second semester students, please enroll now. The, t uh, the, the classes you've received, four classes, but you get a hefty meal out of those classes. Okay, I bless you in a magnificent way. And not only will you receive um, uh, uh, your certificate, but you will also receive a lot of information. The classes are a hundred and what, fifty dollars? A hundred and fifty dollars for four classes. When I was in college, I think three classes was like, and I was in college back in 2000. That was like twelve hundred dollars for three classes. Twelve hundred dollars, I think it was like three classes, or two or three classes I had. And that was twelve hundred dollars. That was a lot of money. A semester. Just twelve hundred dollars. And that was community classes. That wasn't even the university. That was just community classes. Three classes was a thousand twelve hundred dollars. Okay? And that was only for what, six to eight weeks? Yeah. So imagine having to pay that every six to eight weeks, $1,200. And I'm only asking you to pay $150 for four weeks. And I do give out bonus classes. Sometimes I extend the classes a week, an extra week or two, depending on how fast we get through the, the curriculum. But we love you. We thank God for you, we praise God for you. If you're interested in Win Academy, please inbox us today. We're getting ready to go, y'all. Yes, we get ready to go. So, uh, you want to play around?